I, I think that abortion is a very difficult issue, and it is a moral issue, uh, and one that uh, I think good people on both sides can disagree on. Uh, but what ultimately I believe is that uh, women, in consultation with their families, their doctors, their religious advisors, are in best position to make this decision. And I think that the Constitution has a right to privacy in it that shouldn't be subject to state referendum uh, in, in, any more than uh, you know, our First Amendment rights are subject to state referendum, any more than uh, you know, many of the other rights that we have should be subject to uh, you know, popular vote. So uh, this is going to be an important issue. Uh, I will look for those judges who have uh, an outstanding judicial record, who have the intellect, and who hopefully have a sense of what real world, world folks are going through. I'll just give you one quick example. Senator McCain and I disagreed recently when the Supreme Court made it more difficult for uh, a woman named Lily Ledbetter to press her claim for pay discrimination. For years, she had been getting paid less than a man had been paid for doing the exact same job. And when she brought up a suit saying equal pay for equal work, the judges said, well, uh, you know, it's taken you too long to bring this lawsuit, even though she didn't know about it until fairly recently. We tried to overturn it in the Senate. Uh, I supported that effort to provide better guidance to the courts, and John McCain opposed it. I think that it's important for judges to understand that if a woman is out there trying to raise a family, trying to support her family, and is being treated unfairly, then the, the court has to stand up if nobody else will. And, and that's the kind of judge that I want. Time's up. Yeah, obviously, that well, waived the statute of limitations, which you could have gone back 20 or 30 years. It was a trial lawyer's dream. Let me talk to you about an important aspect of this issue. We have to change the culture of America. Those of us who are proudly pro-life understand that. And it's got to be courage and compassion that we show to a young woman who's facing this terribly difficult decision. Senator Obama, as a member of the Illinois State Senate, voted in the Judiciary Committee against a law that would provide immediate medical attention to a child born as a failed abortion. He voted against that. And then on the floor of the state senate, as he did 130 times as a state senator, he voted president. Then there was another bill before the Senate Judiciary Committee in the state of Illinois, not that long ago, where he voted against a ban on partial birth abortion, one of the late term abortion, or really one of the bad procedures, terrible. And then on the floor of the, of the Illinois State Senate, he voted president. I don't know how you vote president on some of that. I don't know how you align yourself with the extreme uh, aspect of the pro-abortion movement in America. And that's his record. And that's a matter of his record, and he'll say it has something to do with Roe v. Wade about the Illinois State Senate. There was clear-cut votes that Senator Obama voted, I think, in direct contradiction to the feelings and views of mainstream America. Response? Well, yeah, let me respond to this. Um, if it sounds incredible that I would uh, vote to withhold life-saving treatment from an infant, uh, that's because it's not true. The, the, here are the facts. Uh, there was a bill that was put forward before the Illinois Senate that said you have to provide life-saving treatment, uh, and that would have helped to undermine Roe v. Wade. The fact is that there was already a law on the books in Illinois that required providing life-saving treatment, which is why not only myself, but uh, pro-choice Republicans and Democrats voted against it. And the Illinois Medical Society, the organization of doctors in Illinois, voted against it. Their Hippocratic Oath would have required them to provide care, and there was already a law in the books. With respect to partial birth abortion, uh, I am completely supportive of a ban on late-term abortions, partial birth or otherwise, as long as there's an exception for the mother's health and life. And this did not contain that exception, and I attempted. Uh, as many have in the past, of including that so that it is constitutional. And that was rejected, and that's why I voted president, because I'm willing to support a ban on late-term abortions as long as we have that exception. Last point I want to make on the, the issue of abortion. Uh, this is a, an issue that, look, it, it devises, and in some ways it may be difficult to, to reconcile the two views. But there surely is some common ground when uh, both those who believe in a choice and those who are opposed to abortion can come together and say, we should try to prevent unintended pregnancies. Uh, by providing appropriate education to our youth, communicating that sexuality is sacred and that they should not be engaged in, in uh, cavalier activity, and providing options for adoption and helping single mothers if they want to choose uh, to keep the baby. Those are all things that we put in the Democratic platform for the first time this year, and I think that's where we can find some common ground, because nobody's pro-abortion. I think it's all we should try to reduce the, these sort of Let's just uh, just again, again, just and again the example of the eloquence of Senator Obama. He's health for the mother. You know that's been stretched by the pro-abortion movement in America to mean almost anything. And that's, that's the extreme pro-abortion position, quote, health. But look, Cindy and I are adoptive parents. We know what a treasure and joy it is to have an adopted child in our lives. We'll do everything we can to approve ad adoption in this country. But that does not mean that we will cease to protect the rights of the unborn. Of course, we have to come together. Of course we have to work together, and of course it's vital that we do so and help these young women who are facing such a difficult decision with the compassion that we'll help them with the adoptive services, but the courage to bring that child into this world, and let's, we'll help take care of it. Let's stop there because I want to get in a question on education, and I'm afraid this is going to have to be our last question, gentlemen. The question is this. The U.S. spends more per capita than any other country on education, yet by every international measurement in math and science competence from kindergarten through the 12th grade, we trail most of the countries of the world. The implications of this are clearly obvious. Some even say it poses a threat right national security. Do you feel that way, and what do you intend to do about it? The question to Senator Obama first. 
this probably has more to do with uh, our economic future than anything. And that means it also has a national security implication because there's never been a nation on earth that saw its economy decline and continued to maintain uh, its primacy as a military power. So uh, we've got to get our education system right. Now, uh, typically what's happened is that there's been a debate uh, between more money uh, or reform. And I think we need both. Uh, in some cases, we are going to have to invest. Early childhood education, which closes the achievement gap. Uh, so that every child is prepared for school, every dollar we invest in that, we end up getting huge benefits with improved reading scores, reduced dropout rates, reduced delinquency rates. I think it's going to be critically important for us to recruit a, a generation of new teachers, an army of new teachers, especially in math and science. Give them higher pay, give them more professional development and support in exchange for higher standards uh, and accountability. Uh, and I think it's important for us to make college affordable. Right now, I meet young people all across the country who either decide not to go to college or if they're going to college, they are taking on 20, 30, 50, 60 thousand dollars worth of debt. And it's very difficult for them to go into some fields, like basic research and science, for example, thinking to themselves that they're going to have a mortgage before they even buy a house. Uh, and that's why uh, I propose a four thousand dollar tuition credit every student every year in exchange for some form of community service, whether it's military service, whether it's Peace Corps, whether it's working in the community. Uh, if we do those things, then I believe that we can create a better school system. But there's one last ingredient that I just want to mention, and that's parents. We can't do it just in the schools. Parents are going to have to show more responsibility. They've got to turn off the TV set, put away the video games, and finally start instilling that thirst for knowledge that our students need. Senator McCain. Well, it's a civil rights issue of the 21st century. Uh, there's no doubt that we have achieved equal access to schools in America after a long and difficult and terrible struggle. But what is the advantage in a low-income area of sending a child to a failed school, and that being your only choice? So choice and competition amongst schools is one of the key elements. It's already been proven in places like New Orleans and New York City and other places where we have charter schools, where we take good teachers and we reward them and promote them. And we find bad teachers another line of work. And we have to be able to give parents the same choice, frankly, that Senator Obama and Mrs. Obama had and Cindy and I had, to send our kids to the school, the kids to the school of their choice. Charter schools aren't the only answer, but they're providing competition. They are providing the kind of competitions that have upgraded both schools, uh, types of schools. Now, throwing money at the problem is not the answer. You will find that some of the worst school systems in America get the most money per student. So I believe that we need to reward these good teachers. We need to encourage programs such as Teach for America and Troops to Teachers where people after having served in the military can go right to teaching and not have to take these examinations which or have the certification that uh, some are required in some state. But we must improve education in this country. As far as college education is concerned, we need to make the student loans available. We need to give them a repayment schedule that they can meet. We need to have full student loan uh, program for in-state tuition, and we certainly need to adjust the student loan eligibility to inflation. Do you think the federal government should play a larger role in the schools? Well, and I mean more federal money. Well, we have a tradition of local control of the schools, uh, and that's a tradition that has served us well. But I do think that it is important for the federal government to step up and help local school districts do some of the things they need to do. Now, we tried to do this under President Bush. He put forward No Child Left Behind. Uh, unfortunately, they left, they left the money behind for No Child Left Behind. And local school districts end up having more of a burden, a bunch of unfunded mandates. The